have you had time to consider, I'm sure you have, what are your top priorities? Well, I think without doubt, um, and this won't surprise anyone, my top priority is Afghanistan. Um, uh, having served out there myself, but I didn't need too much imagination. You know, we've got people who are at war out in Afghanistan, and we need to make sure they're properly resourced, they're happy with the plans we're providing, all those sort of things. So that's absolute top priority, uh, as you'd expect. As I said, secondly, it's do we uh, do contingency operations well enough? Have we got enough in our locker for the unexpected? And the, um, the last few days' business with the um, Yemeni-based bomber, um, uh, you know, revealed that this is a very troublesome and uncertain world. And I'd like to put a bit more into our locker over the next year or two. And then finally, rather big one, we've got to implement the SDSR. But I think I view that, and I say this to a military audience who will understand it, in the national security strategy, we've actually got what we in the army and the military would call a, a, a commander's intent. Um, and then we've got in the SDSR some detailed orders. So a few challenges, but I'm looking forward to it. Covered quite a few things there, but perhaps we can start with Afghanistan. How would you sum up the progress in Afghanistan? Well, I think I'm right to say, and I was interviewed by the Today programme today, and I noticed one or two people have picked it up, that we're right to have uh, a sense of cautious optimism. Very cautious, but nevertheless, I think we can have it. Um, you know, beginning to turn a corner, long way to go. But the surge is only really, you know, just now gathering momentum. And I think the early indicators are positive. Um, the military size we've spoken about a lot won't win this war, though. Um, and we've now got to encourage our civilian partners and our Afghan civilian partners, as well as the ANSF, uh, you know, to redouble their efforts so that there's a comprehensive solution to it. 2015 has been set as the timeline for the withdrawal of troops. Is that still a realistic target? Well, um, the Prime Minister was very careful to emphasise that it was about the withdrawal of combat troops. Um, in other words, there's going to be an enduring military role for us in Afghanistan in the support role. Um, the details of that will have to be uh, seen nearer the time. But it's really important that people see our effort in Afghanistan not as ending in 2015, but as another waypoint into a different phase where we'll be there in support and particularly on the training administrative logistics side I'm sure that will go on but more and more of the emphasis will be on the civilian side. How do you think the military personnel feel about the results of the SDSR? Well, I've got lots of friends at various ranks. Lots of people think people in my sort of position only get it all through the chain of command because one of my best muckers is a WA1 in a certain regiment, and so he told me exactly uh, what he thought. Uh, I suppose... Um, and I may be quite wrong, you know, and I'm going to have a critical audience out and say he hasn't got a clue, uh, but a sort of sense that it could have been a lot worse, um, a, a real desire to see it continue in terms of direction of travel. You know, some people said it was a missed opportunity. I don't actually buy that. But we all know, particularly those who have sort of been in Afghanistan and Iraq, that there's some way to go in understanding contemporary conflict and making sure we geared up for it. And I'd absolutely, I'm in that group. Um, but we were tied into certain solutions, contractual and otherwise. Um, and then the real uh, focus for me and all people at my level must be looking after the people involved, whether they seek in due course, when we understand more, to uh, go out under what I hope will be you know, generous redundancy schemes uh, through to those that will remain in the armed forces, who I emphasise are the vast, vast majority. And I think on balance, it'll continue to be an extremely worthwhile and rewarding career. Yemen has recently hit the headlines and we hear about the threat of cyber crime. What do you see as the next big threat militarily? Well, I think um, it'll be more of the same in that many of the things you've just mentioned have become clearer and clearer to us. Let me give you an example. Uh, what we might have sought to achieve in terms of writing down, destroying a country's infrastructure in a major war, tomorrow we'd probably seek to do that or others will seek to do it to us through cyber attack. So we've got to create headroom to accommodate these new threats born of, for want of a better term, the information age. Um, and I suppose that's where I see the biggest problem. And being 
anchored in old war while we know in our heart of hearts that we've got to get into a new form of war the nature of which hasn't fundamentally changed but the way you actually do it is changing uh, and it's that and it's associated this uh, it's non-state actors failed state uh, failed states how are they affecting us so it's all that rather mucky area compared with a rather clinical and attractive for a, for a military man sort of traditional view of war which was all about you know no civilian and you had a jolly good punch up sadly a few people died all that so that's old speak and I doubt we'll ever get back into that so millions of pounds is being pumped into uh, dealing with the cyber threat are you happy that that money has been allocated that way rather than on boots on the ground well I think it's a matter of both it's not an either or um, actually if you like boots on the ground might be a shorthand for the army the Royal Marines uh, the helicopters that we use so intrinsically in places like Afghanistan um, it was a reflection um, of a political level understanding that those sort of things are so important in future war that they were relatively uh, left untouched I mean the army's got to find up to 7,000 um, uh, people uh, to um, shed over the next five years or so um, as a proportion of um, what the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force are losing it was much smaller so I, I think it has been reflected and is understood that it's not just about cyber and it, indeed it's not just about um, new forms of war we still need um, aircraft and ships 